Hi, in this video, we're gonna use Veeam Recovery Orchestrator to direct restore Veeam backups into Azure. Let's go ahead and hop into the demo. In Veeam Recovery Orchestrator, we added some additional functionality. So here in the dashboard, you can actually see your top plans by recovery point issues. We can also see our top plans by recovery time issues. So this gives us some options to be able to identify quickly which orchestration plans might need to be edited or changed in order to make sure that we're hitting our recovery time objectives and recovery point objectives for disaster recovery. First, we're gonna go into administration tab and we're gonna go ahead and look at some recovery locations. So this is gonna be the location that we actually want to set up our restores to happen. Here, we're gonna be adding in our Azure location. Now you can see here that we actually have some recovery plans running to this location. So we just wanna make sure that we don't make any changes, otherwise those will actually affect those. So this is gonna take some time to enumerate. This is actually just communicating back to our on-premise Veeam Backup and Replication server and giving us the additional information about what our Azure cloud environment looks like. So we're gonna to go to next and we're gonna choose our recovery options and specify which actual workloads will be recovered here. And then we're gonna select our backup server that we wanna use and actually pull the backups from. Inside of that backup server, you'll see your subscription that's been added in for Azure to perform the direct restore to. And then we're gonna choose our available repository to pull the backups. Next, we have the available proxies. These proxies are gonna be utilized for performing the direct restore. So you could set those up previously, and then you have your option to select a few. And then we also have our regions for where we wanna have our virtual machines be recovered. And of course, these are all listed out based off of your actual Azure subscription. Now we have our resource group that we're gonna be utilizing as well as choosing the cloud virtual machine configuration. So you'll see here, you actually have up to three different configurations you could choose from. Ideally, the idea is you can use multiple uh, different types of configurations based off of um, how you wanna recover those workloads. Now we have agent network mapping. We're gonna actually skip through this, but just a quick little rule of thumb, you can use 000, um, and that'll add, automatically apply a mask, and it'll just pick up any of those uh, agent networks and automatically deploy those into the Azure environment. You have your VM network mapping as well. That's also gonna walk you through how to do uh, how to actually map the networks from your VMware environment up into Azure. Um, again, setting up your subnets, uh, choosing which hosts, which data stores, you wanna be able to recover uh, those virtual machines to within Azure. And the next piece in here is actually your quarantine network. So this is actually uh, something that's brand new with version six of Veeam Recovery Orchestrator. So as we're going through a process of performing what we call clean DR, we wanna ensure that those backups aren't going to be um, any, host anything that's malicious or uh, potentially uh, have anything from a ransomware perspective onto those. So we have the option here before actually recovering that into production to recover that into a quarantine network within our Azure environment. You'll just have to make sure you set up that quarantine network beforehand and then you check a box and you can have that option to use utilize this as the recovery location. Finally, we'll go ahead and hit finish and we have our recovery location that's set up to target Microsoft Azure. Now we'll exit out of this administration tab and we're gonna go ahead and look at some orchestration plans. So you can see I have multiple orchestration plans that have already been st stood up. We can hop into one here. Um, you can actually see that there's multiple workloads that we have set up to actually recover directly into Azure. But we're gonna go ahead and create a brand new one so that way we can walk through the process of how easy it is to create an orchestration plan. Um, the one nice thing too to keep in mind is that we can actually combine different types of backups into a single orchestration plan. So we're gonna name this one Tier 1 Apps to Azure, and you can also fill in the description here. So if there's very specific applications um, that are gonna be writing into Azure, you have that option. Next, we're gonna choose the type of plan. We are gonna be recovering this into Azure, which is why we've selected Cloud. And then our recovery location has already been populated because we just added that in. Now we're gonna select our actual backups or our groups that we wanna have recovered in. So I'm gonna select this protection group that has a few agent backups in included in it. 
And then we have our options for default recoveries, whether or not uh, we have some issues, if, uh, if a virtual machine isn't able, or an agent in this case isn't able to be recovered, uh, we could stop the plan or we could proceed as well as uh, recover the VMs in each group in parallel or in sequence. We have some virtual machine steps that we'll have to take. So since we are just recovering into Azure, it's just gonna do a simple create a cloud VM. But if you were recovering this anywhere else, you would see some additional options you could choose from. And now we're gonna set our target SLAs. So your recovery time objective, maximum time allowed before the service is restored after failure, and your recovery point objective, the amount of data that's gonna be acceptable from a data loss perspective. We'll go ahead and we'll have the report downloaded and then we'll have that report actually scheduled as well. So that way we know that this is gonna automatically do a check to verify that the repository is available for us to perform a restore from those backups, but then also that we have the necessary credentials in order to talk to Azure and so that those virtual machines that are we're gonna be configuring in Azure are gonna be available as well. So once we hit next and finish, we'll see this orchestration plan will be built. And we're gonna go ahead and kick off one of these orchestration plans. So I, you see here I have two Windows agents that we're gonna go ahead and recover to Azure. We're gonna enable the plan, plug in your password for credentials so that way we know it's okay to restore these in Azure. Uh, we can download that readiness check report here so we can see the summary and everything that has been verified. Next, we'll go ahead and choose the restore point, which we're gonna use the latest one. And then we also have the option to do an additional ransomware scan. So we can go ahead and scan the restore point. We can select up to 10 by default, or we can change this to two, which I'm gonna actually change it to two specifically because I've already scanned this previously, so I know that there's nothing malicious there. But if we did find anything malicious, we can cancel the restore, proceed to the next step, as well as complete the restore, but connect it to that quarantine network that we have added into the recovery location. So there's our summary. We'll go ahead and kick this off. It'll take a few just to kind of refresh the screen. Um, and then I'm also going to kind of skip through this because again, remember it is direct restore to Azure. So we're taking a backup and we're actually converting that backup on the fly as an Azure virtual machine. So you're gonna see all the steps that's, that's gonna entail as far as our recovery point objectives, recovery time objectives that were set, our cloud VM configurations that are gonna be utilized, where the restore location is, Next, you're gonna see the Windows Defender. That's what I'm using by default to do that AV scan on the actual machine itself. We have two of them in here, so it's gonna scan one first and then it's gonna to proceed to the next. Once it does its scan and it verifies that there's nothing, there's no threats detected, you're gonna see that error output. And now it's gonna start the restore job using that Azure proxy we selected inside of recovery location and then gonna go ahead and process and start restoring those disks. So this is gonna take some time, but we're again, we're just gonna skip through some of this while I edited this so that way we can move on forward. So next you're gonna see the restore disk. You're gonna see the perform to the conversion. And once that conversion is complete, you're gonna see that virtual machine that'll boot up within Azure. So it looks like we got our complete successful log there. And that is how easy it is to show direct restore into Azure using Beam Recovery Orchestrator. If you have any more questions or if you want to see some more resources, please feel free to go check out beam.com.